Hello and welcome back to the channel. This lecture is all about different types of join operations that you can do in PySpark to optimize your application. So without further any ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we'll just shift our focus and discuss like a common Spark join operations because the joins are like one of the most popular operation you will be doing on your data as part of your data pipeline and this is like a more crucial operation if you are thinking about optimizing your spark workloads because it triggers like an expensive moments of data and it demands compute and network resources from the cluster and here we are going to see some of the most common techniques that you can use in your spark application to speed up this join process so without wasting any time let's get into it so join operation is a pretty common transformation in the big data analytics where you have like the two data sets in the form of tables or the data frames which are like merged over a common matching key so for example if you have like two tables one is employee table and the another one is salary table where you have all the details about employee salary so if the employee id is common between those two tables then that is definitely the key for you to join those two tables together and get the result of the merged data so similar to relational databases the spark data frame as well as the sql and dataset apis will provide you a series of join transformation so it will include like the common joins which you have already familiar with in rdbms like inner joins outer joins then you have the left and right joins and so on so all these operation will trigger a large amount of data movements across the spark executor because as you already know that spark has the ability to partition your data and once you're doing such intensive operations like joins then the data has to shuffle between those partitions and it could be like an expensive task to your spark executor so at the heart of this transformation is how spark will compute what data to produce as well as what keys and associated data to write on the disk and also how to transfer those keys and data to the nodes as part of the operations so there could be like multiple operations like group by then you have the join aggregate sort by reduce by key so these movements is commonly referred to the shuffle which we have talked just now so shuffle operations you have to be very careful in your application and only used whenever required because those kind of very expensive for your spark executor and may slow down your execution time so the spark specifically has five distinct join strategies and using these strategies it will exchanges then moves groups and merges the data across the executors so it will include the broadcast has join then you have the shuffle has join then you have the shuffle sort merge join then also you have like the broadcast nested loop join and the last one is shuffle and replicated nested loop join so these are the strategies you, you can utilize in your spark application but there are only two common strategies that we are going to discuss in this lecture and there those will be enough for you to optimize your spark load so in this lecture we are only going to focus on two which is like the broadcast has join as well as the shuffle sort merge join so let's talk about them one by one okay so let's talk about broadcast has join which is more often used in spark community and it is also known as like the map side only joint so in this join the broadcast has join is employed when two data set in which the one would be very smaller which can fit into drivers and executors memory and the another data set is very big and it is ideally be spread from moment so if like this needs to be joined over a cartesian condition and also if these two data sets are needs to be joined over a certain condition or columns you can use the broadcast has join so using a spark broadcast variable the smaller data set is broadcasted by the driver to all spark executors so it is as shown in this figure so as you can see the smaller data set is shown in the yellow color as well as the large data set is shown in the gray color so as you can see the smaller data set is broadcasted by the driver to all these executors this is important because the smaller data set can fit into drivers and executors memory so it makes sense to broadcast them to speed up your join operation and this strategy will avoid the large exchange to a greater extent so by default 
the spark will broadcast the join if a smaller data set is less than 10 mbps so it is like by default and you can also set this configuration using the property which i have given here which is like spark.sql.auto broadcast join threshold so you can decrease or increase the size depending upon how much memory you have on each executors and in the driver so that is also more important so if you are confident that you have enough memory you can use for a broadcast join and that could be like more than 10 mbps so you can definitely use this parameter so the common use case is when you have like the common set of keys between two data frames so one will be holding very less information than the other so it makes it a smaller data set and a larger data set and if you need like a merged view for both then you can definitely use the broadcast join there because it will be way more optimized than conventional joining methods you are using in the rdbms so it is like a very easiest and the fastest join which will which spark will offer because it does not involve any shuffle of the data set and all the data is available locally to the executor after a broadcast so you just have to be sure that you have enough memory on both spark driver as well as the executor and you'll be good to go so enough about how it works now we will discuss when to use this broadcast join this is this will be very easier and you will be able to crack this up after listening to this so you have to use this type of join when there are when these conditions are satisfied so the first condition is so when each key within the smaller and the larger data sets is hashed to the same partition by spark then you can definitely use the broadcast join the next condition is like when one data set is much smaller than the other like one can fit into the memory which is like around 10 mbps then definitely it will speed up the broadcast hash join will make more sense that will be the second condition and then the third one is like when you only want to perform an equi join for combining the two data set based upon like the matching unsorted keys so that also will be the suitable condition for using this broadcast hash joins so these are like the some of the conditions you can definitely use broad, broad, broadcast hash joins to speed up your spark loads okay so now let's talk about our another and also one of the popular join operation which is shuffle sort merge join so the sort merge algorithm is like a very efficient way for merging two large data sets so the previous one was suitable for a one smaller and a one larger data set but if you have like both larger data sets then this join will make more sense so when like two data set with a common hashable key that will end up being on the same partition you can use this join so from spark's perspective this means that all the rows within each data set with the same key are hashed on the same partition on the same executor so obviously this means that the data has to be collated or exchanged between the executors so like as the name suggest this join scheme has like the two stages the one will be the sort phase and followed by the merge phase so the sort phase will sorts each data set by its desired join key and the merge stage will iterates over each key in the row from each data set and merges the rows if two keys will match so that is like a basic principle of this shuffle sort merge join so by default the sort merge join is enabled via the parameter which i have given here which is like spark dot sql dot join dot prefer sort merge join so by this parameter you can enable this sort merge join so here the main idea will be like to take two large data frames and join them with a common key that's it all you have to do but there are some optimization techniques you can use for this type of join that we are going to discuss now so this join will have like the exchange step so this exchange operation is like the shuffle of the result of map operation on each executor so in sort merge join we have like the exchange step which we can definitely eliminate from the scheme if we create a partition buckets for common sorted keys or like the columns on which we want to perform frequent equi joins so we will create like a explicit number of bucketing for storing specific sorted columns so by this strategy we can definitely optimize the shuffle sort merge join but you may ask 
when you can use this type of join so when like each key with two large data set can be sorted and hashed to the same partition so that time you can definitely use this sort my join and also when you are performing like a equi joins to for combining two data sets then also you can use the sort my join and when you are preventing exchange and sort operation to save large shuffle operation across the network then also this join is very suitable so these are like the most popular join operations we can use to optimize your spark loads so this was like a very theoretical introductory part but in the upcoming hands on tutorials we are definitely going to use this type of joins to get your better understanding and see the difference we will also examine the stages on spark ui to see how it makes difference and what are like the different stages to perform this type of joins and how we can optimize those to reduce the run time of your application so i'll see you in the next lecture i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching